video, the new secret weapon for lead gen and SEO, uh, hosting today's senior SEO analyst at Web Marketing 123, and Dane Fredrickson, principal at Digital Accomplice. Good morning, Dane. Good morning. Thanks for having us. Very happy to have you here. Alex, good morning. Hey, Kevin. Uh, good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. Uh, so, All right, so to uh, get started here, sorry folks, just having a, a little bit of audio issue over here. Uh, all right, uh, so just to give a, a little bit of background about web marketing 123, uh, since 2004, uh, we've employed a, a metrics-based approach to converting online visibility into measurable business results. Um, and uh, really, the, our approach uh, through, uh, through the web is to help find you uh, more revenue, reach your target consumers, uh, and give them the information that they're looking for. Um, we were named just this year to the 2012 Inc. 500 list of the top 500 fastest growing private U.S. companies. Uh, so we're very excited about that and uh, very excited to uh, show you some of our capabilities. All right, a couple practical matters as we get started here. A uh, question we often get is, uh, are the slides available? Uh, yes, the slides are available. If you would like a copy after the webinar, you can just email seo at webmarketing123.com. Uh, if you would like to tweet about today's webinar uh, or stay informed through any social media channels, you can find us at our Twitter, Twitter handle, at webmarketing123. You can also find us on Facebook and Google+. And if you are ready to take the next step with us, if you like what we're talking about today and would like to receive a complimentary SEO assessment or discuss any of your digital marketing needs, uh, you can absolutely do that. Just email uh, SEO at webmarketing123 and set up a complimentary analysis. All right, so to dive into just today's presentation, uh, here's the agenda that we will be covering today. Uh, five main topics here. Uh, first being the power of visual storytelling. Uh, second, that we'll be making a, a business case for video. Uh, and then also diving into the SEO value of video and how, to, how video can not only help make a business impact, but help the search engines uh, drive more traffic to your site. Then we'll dive into the six principles of successful video. Uh, and then after that, dive into the three-month game plan to give you guys an action plan, an idea of uh, what are some of the steps that we need to take. Uh, so to go into this first section, uh, Dane is going to give us uh, a little bit of background on the power of visual storytelling. Um, okay, folks. Um, maybe start in again, Dane. Okay, so we were just discussing what the uh, what video can do for you, um, and one of the most important things to note about video, as you all know, is that it really helps um, grab attention. It jumps off, you know, off a website or um, or social media at you. Um, it also really helps to illustrate um, ideas and bring them to life through the use of you know, moving pictures as well as sound and, you know, sometimes text and graphics and things like that. So um, it really adds a lot of color to um, your messages. Um, obviously, um, video uh, is a shorter format than, you know, maybe a lengthy white paper. So it's a great way to um, get a, an idea across quickly. Um, on a website, I absolutely will help keep people around for a longer time. Um, my website in particular, I have a higher than average uh, stickiness because of all the video content on there. Um, also, um, people share uh, video. They are excited by it. They, you know, they either watch it together on a computer or a mobile device, um, and in social media, it's obviously um, a preferred form of uh, form of uh, media to share. Um, and also, it's it's kind of a, a trend right now. Just like you know, websites ten years ago, fifteen years ago, everyone needed a website. You know, five years ago, everyone needed to get into social media. Now, video is sort of that next thing that um, 21st century calls for. Why don't we jump in and take a look at um, uh, at, a, at a good example of this? I'm going to take over the screen here, and uh, is that showing? Oh, that's great. So um, 
Hopefully everyone can hear this. Um, here we go. What's up, marketers? The age of online video is here. I know I'm just a kid, but trust me. Online video is now everywhere. Websites, YouTube, social media, mobile. What, you think this is a joke? Remember 10 years ago when you didn't think you needed a website? Boom. Wake up and smell what the internet's been cooking. The audience for online video is huge. And so is the opportunity. It's time to tell your story and engage your customers like never before. Awareness, branding, education, product demo, recruitment, SEO, CRM. I could go on all day. Like me, online video is still young. But the data is clear. Video makes a difference in your bottom line. But don't listen to me. I'm just a kid. What would I know about the internet? So, um, you know, already I like I, I, I love your brand already. Like, I don't know what it is about smiling kids. You know, those of us who are on the line, it's like, how long was that? That was a minute and 20. And the amount of information that I, that I take in from that, but more importantly, the, the amount of feeling and affect that comes through is, is really what's dramatic. Yeah, that's, um, that's really part of the power of video is that uh, it engages people um, with you know, several different things at once, visuals, sound, music, and then there's an emotional component as well. So um, you know, that's certainly one of the, the more powerful tools that's available for communicating. So yeah, that's what you're picking up on. And I get, I get a lot of compliments on that video because of that reason. Well, I, I think it really did a good job. I think later we're going to be talking about the different, you know, you know, different functions that video can play, but you managed to, to explain many different uses for video, but at the same time, um, touch touch the heart and you know get the uh, the trigger the motivation. Yeah, the uh, the emotional component is there as well as the information, and because we've got a little bit of a, a story to it, you've got you know, a, I hate to call it a gimmick, but there's a little bit of a hook. You know, using the kid to tell the story rather than myself or a CEO or something like that, it automatically kind of gets beyond someone's radar. They start to, hey, this is, this is interesting. Let me pay attention. So that's a great way to kind of get around people's defenses in this um, um, sensory overload online environment we all live in. Right. So Alex, I thought maybe you could give us an overview of some different ways that video can be applied. All right, thanks, Evan. Sorry, just uh, switching our audio back over here. Um, so a couple of things that the video can do, as we've talked about. Uh, one, it, it can grab people's attention. You know, if we think about the context of, of a web page, if you have a video right up front that someone can play, that's probably one of the quick and easiest ways for them to get information about your brand uh, and about what you do and, and really you know, have, have a chance to have your call to action uh, and, and, and your unique, unique selling propositions right up on the front page. Um, Addition, additionally, you know, video across other mediums definitely grabs people's attention. Uh, I know that I'm personally more likely to click on a video and, and hit play, you know, a one-minute, two-minute video, versus reading an entire article. You know, if I start to play a video, I'm probably more likely um, interested and engaged and might actually finish that video. It's a little bit different than, you know, reading a bunch of text. Uh, additionally, it, it brings some ideas to life. Um, so, you know, I think that one great example of this is, is a video that, that Dane actually did for, uh, for Web Marketing 123. Um, and it, it really does a great job of, um, it's an overview video of our company, of our team, and of our approach. Uh, and it really brings some ideas that, that aren't normally translated that well just on text or, or just on the phone uh, into really an engaging, rich form of media uh, that, that takes on a whole new life uh, once presented. Uh, additionally, as I mentioned, you can story in less time. Uh, so the idea that you, know, you can have a two-minute video and, and really accomplish a lot and, and give people a lot of information using multiple mediums 
but still within a, you know potentially one or one to two. Yeah, I think we definitely kind of learned a lot. Got a got a good sense of uh, not only the information about uh, why you need to use video from that last video, um, but by using such a rich, engaging medium, we're able to kind of get a feel for the brand and, and that an emotional component that we talked about. Um, as Dan mentioned, it's our website here. So we have content that people can more likely engage with uh, and, and play as opposed to just things that they're reading. Um, it, it can definitely help. It also makes it very, very share-worthy. Um, so can help to create a buzz and be found. But, you know, we've all know about how how viral videos can, um, you know, how fast those can spread once shared. Um, you know, and, and even if we're not necessarily making um, making something that will be shared by the millions, can definitely be shared within our niches, within our industries, um, and, and really to the people that it's most relevant to. Um, so I think that it, this really can apply to you know both B two B and B two C. Um, and Last point here is updating your brand for the 21st century. Um, as, as Dane mentioned, you know, 10 years ago, not everyone really realized they needed to get a website, or they were in the process of getting a website. Now everyone's on social media, and soon everyone will have video. Everyone will have the capability to um, to engage with our customers um, more commonly and, and in this more updated medium. Um, anything, anything to add, guys? That I miss. Well, I, I mean, I, I think you really got it on the head. Um, I think you know, a, a lot of people, uh, you know, for those out there that um, have already sort of agreed with that vision of the future, uh, I think a lot of companies want to do video, and they're sort of realizing that they can. Um, but I think um, you know, because the tools now are democratized, and we all have a, a video uh, camera on our phone, or you know, in your bag or whatever, it's, it's so accessible. There's a lot of confusion about what to do. Um, you know how how to actually get something done in a professional way for business, um, or you know is when and if, is it okay to actually just shoot something with your phone and stick it on social media? So I know there's um, a lot of people that are interested, but they um, they don't really know where to start. So um, we're hoping to you know, obviously address that as well in this webinar. Okay, rolling right along. All right, so now that we've Identified, uh, you know, why digital, uh, excuse me, visual storytelling can be important. What are some of the ways that we can use this and, and help make an impact for our business? Um, so, first one is, is drive revenue, um, and and how we how can we drive revenue? How can we take the concept of, of putting a video on our site and translate that all the way uh, to a paying customer and, and us, our company receiving revenue? Uh, one of the ways is, is through content marketing. Um, and content marketing, as it relates to SEO, is, is one of the most important and newest uh, kind of state-of-the-art um, techniques for generating inbound links. Um, inbound links are a very important piece of SEO, as it um, essentially is the way for Google to provide third-party validation. Um, if more people are linking to your website, essentially you get more votes of trust. One of the best ways to get more links to your website is to present people with information that they want to share and that they want to link to. And video is one of the best ways to do that. So by using our video content and marketing across other websites, we can generate inbound links uh, for our site. Essentially the idea is, is presenting shareworthy content. And I think we all know that video is one of the, uh, the most shareworthy mediums. Um, another, another piece is demand generation. Um, so as, as we start to generate some, some demand uh, for our products, um, using video as one of these mediums can, can greatly help for people to, to better understand what we do and better generate the, you know, the demand for our product as they better understand what it does by communicating uh, it with this more effective medium. One of the things that became clear to us as we kind of uh, uh, spoke with Dane, researching this project, and also reviewing how we've used video for our clients we saw that video can play a role from the top to the bottom of the sales funnel. It has a, it has a role to play. So like, um, and then on the other side, it has a whole other function to strengthen your organization internally for training, for internal communications, for investor relations. One example that you told me, Dane, was about the, uh, the CEO of, uh, of uh, United during the Continental United merger who created this whole internal video blog, Jeff's Journal, which allowed him to speak directly to the whole company and address fears about layoffs and changes to benefits. 
So, and again, production value on that, um, mobile phone. Yeah, minimal. I, I think, yeah, the, you know, maybe the high level point to make here that seems relevant to me is just like you could use text for any purpose, you can use video for any purpose. It's just a really powerful way to communicate. So if you can use that for sales, just like you can use text for sales or photos for sales. I know, so it applies all the way through um, the entire process. Um, I think a lot of people just think video is like some other thing. It's not a thing, it's a way of communicating. Um, so I, I think Dane makes a, an excellent point that really video is just a medium to communicate all the ideas and, and all the value propositions that our companies have. Um, so along those lines, let's take a look at, at how we can make the business case uh, for video. Um, so a couple statistics here. About 50% of internet traffic uh, is video, people looking for videos um, and, and viewing videos. Four billion daily views on YouTube. Um, there are about two and a half days of video uploaded every minute, and 24 million U.S. smartphone users are regularly watching online videos on their phones. Um, so clearly with the advent of, of increased mediums, we can use video across more channels to effectively communicate. Um, in terms of talking about the effectiveness of videos, um, there's about a 400% higher engagement versus static content. Um, there's a 64% increase in a prospect's propensity to buy after watching a video. Um, this, was, this was for an internet retailer, uh, but you can imagine how um, better engaging with your brand through a video might make someone more, um, you know, more willing to buy. I know that I've you know, definitely felt, felt the need to create a video um, you know, just from watching Dave's video. Um, you also see about two to three times higher email click-through rates uh, on for, uh, based on a Forrester study. Um, and about a 9% increase of time spent on the website. Um, another thing we want to cover, a, a video has, has become a critical information source for senior executives. Um, so it's an interactive media strategy study last year um, that said 75% of executives are viewing work-related videos on business-related websites weekly. So the idea that people are only on YouTube uh, watching, you know, funny viral videos or something like that is, is definitely not true. Uh, you know, for, for example, the presidential debates uh, last night were uh, featured all on YouTube, um, and, and that, that's a medium that people are consistently turning to. So I think that, um, you know, the idea of, of boxing video kind of into one area that wouldn't necessarily make sense. Video is being used across all mediums and, and across all industries. Um, so those executives, those uh, decision makers that you might be targeting in your business, uh, in your marketing plans, uh, those people are watching videos. And, and this 75% this figures of executive, that has quadrupled since 2007. So you can see the exponential growth of video. Uh, and in relation to these people viewing these videos, we also see that work-related video is driving executives to take action. About 65% of viewers will visit a vendor's website, about 53% conducted an online search. Um, next slide here, um, a couple uh, surveys here talk about how marketers are using, um, using videos. Um, so 81% of people have said they have used video for marketing at some point. Um, so it, it definitely you're, you're behind the curve and, and um, part of the minority if you're not already using some sort of video. About half of B2B marketers are increasing the use of online video. Uh, about one-third of them aggressively increasing, and only about 15% of those have no plans. So uh, even if you're not currently doing it, it's, it's very likely you have a plan, and it's, it, you know, there's awareness within the company that video is an effective medium that you should be using. Um, and then uh, also in relation to B2B marketers that are employing videos, uh, it's risen um, about from 42% to 52%, and with a 36% increase in confidence. So not only are people using more videos, but they're becoming more confident in its ability to effectively communicate their messages and, um, and actually drive revenue and drive business results. So video is a, is a social play. Um, and, and the reason we say that is, you know, we, we read alone, but we watch video in groups. Um, you know, many times video is shared. That's the idea of a viral video uh, that we were discussing. Um, people are, are sharing videos. Um, and not just, 
you know, for personal videos. It, we found that 54% of senior executives share work-related videos at least on a weekly basis. Um, so you can imagine what kind of effect this could have if you are posting the right kind of videos that are uh, clearly communicating the, the marketing message you're trying to relay, uh, and this gets shared every week by those in your target market. I, I think one, one epiphany I had about this was, I guess I sort of imagined uh, one sort of root of influence a video might take is that some lower level person in, in an organization or in the middle might see something and then share it up, but here we are seeing from a Forbes Insights study that video is also being shared down. It's being shared across organizations. It's a way for your message to travel. Yeah, there's, there's lower friction on it. I mean, if you think about how ridiculous it would be to send your boss, hey, read this white paper. I mean, unless you really had, they really had to, who's got time for that, you know? But in a minute or two minutes, Maybe you could, you know, communicate a core idea that would impact them a lot faster. Right. So higher information density. Yeah, exactly. Like, like calorie density or nutrient density in food. Is yeah, and, and they'd probably thank you for it, too. Mm -hmm. Like, thanks for the information in a way that's easy for me, rather than making my life hard. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's really one of the things also for, you know, not just internally, but for your customers as well. They've got a lot of things distracting them. Don't you want to lower the friction on their ability to absorb your, you know, your message? I think that's really a really important point. Pre-digesting your message. <laughs> All right. So as we think about adding video, we want to think about you know how can this uh, how effective is this for us, and, and what does that actually mean in terms of business results? Um, so think about think about this in terms of cost savings. How many customer service calls could be avoided if you had a video FAQ? You could answer those common questions that. Uh, that people are facing in a video, in a, in a, um, in a medium that is easy for them to understand. Uh, it's, it's definitely a lot easier. I, I think one good example of that is uh, I'm always surprised at the amount of YouTube videos uh, that are instructional videos um, and the effectiveness of those videos uh, versus maybe a, a written list of instructions um, works a lot better. You know, well, videos like uh, how to tie a tie or, or things like that. Um, those, those videos have millions of views every day, so people are looking for kind of easy answers like that, and, and those could definitely apply to some of the situations and frequently asked questions uh, that, that your customer service team might, might face. Yeah, and I think that the um, you know a lot, a lot of companies or you know uh, people looking to do video might be have a little sticker shock or be surprised at, at the cost of actually making professional video. But if you think about it, once you make that video, it's done and it's out there working for you 24/7 on a global scale. And you know any business right now that's doing marketing online, that's probably your goal, is a global or national sort of Im impact. And you know the the video is not going to punch you out and go home at the end of the day. It's, it's available out there working for you. Yeah, and and being shared as well. So the you know the the effect can be exponential over time uh, as you, you know take that one piece of collateral uh, and and more people start to see it. Um, as we think about uh, you know revenue impact. How can, how can we get more money out of video? Um, there was a, oh, a Forrester study in the last year that said about 70% of the, uh, the purchase decision uh, for B2B marketers, um, about 70% of that decision is made before they even talk to a sales rep. Um, and and this, this means a couple things for us. In the context of, of digital marketing and, and, and SEO, for example, uh, very important for us to be able to get in front of those people uh, and give them the right information because they are using the web to find that information before they reach out. People, people want to be informed and, and kind of know what they're doing and not just get a sales pitch. Uh, so as you think about video as a potential medium for that, what if we could measure the, Im the impact of video on closed deals? Um, how much time could that save your salespeople uh, if people are already more educated about your product, more educated about your, your product offerings? And, and this is all information that we, we probably have a lot of on our website but probably not be clearly effect, uh, excuse me, effectively communicated uh, because it's not via video. Yeah, and we just actually had a question come up um, from Stephen about uh, what's the optimal video length and where do people drop off? Yeah, so you know, I, I'm sure that there's a lot of debate about this issue and it's going to be entirely dependent on uh, what the format and purpose of that video is. Um, you know, generally speaking, we all have short attention spans now. We're very distracted. So I think a 30-second or, you know, really short kind of video like that, maybe a minute, is generally an ideal format. That said, if you're talking educational content or even like a webinar or something that's been recorded, people will absolutely sit through an hour of video 
if they're really interested in that topic. And those, those are the kind of things that generally don't need to be glossy. They're just a little more utility videos. But if you're just trying to kind of do awareness kind of a play or make something shareable, shorter is usually better. And I find 30 seconds, a minute, maybe two minutes is, is a good kind of way to think about it. After a couple of minutes, people really drop off. I, in fact, I think it's after 30 seconds or a minute is when you see the biggest cliff. So it depends. <laughs> Classic answer. Yeah. All right. Uh, so now let, let's now that we understand, you know, the the purpose of uh, why video can impact your business. Um, let's let's take a look at the SEO value of video. Um, so before we um, are able to show people our video, we need to get them to our website. Uh, so SEO is, is going to be one of the main main ways to do that. Um, and there are some things that we can do where our video content uh, can actually help us out. Um, and, it, and the way we do that is by getting our videos indexed by Google. Um, an indexed video stands a 50 times chance of ranking on the first results page than any textual page. Um, and the reason for that is because Google is placing a higher priority on video content. Uh, Google is very focused on the end user and, and the kind of uh, consumable content that, that users are looking for. Um, and so Google is trying to display more video, and the competition for video is significantly less. This is a great way for you to get ahead of your competitors by submitting videos. If they don't have videos, even if their website is ranking, your video could potentially rank above their website. Yeah, I think that's, that's a really important point. I mean, that's a huge number, 50 times. And I, you, you just sort of mentioned it, but I just want to sort of reiterate because I think it's important. It kind of stands to reason that video is more valuable. It's a little bit harder to do. It's a little more engaging. It's a little more shareable. So yeah, that's, that's the good stuff. And so they're absolutely going to make that priority. And I think, as you also pointed out, that's a huge um, early adopter kind of move, even though video is more and more, we're seeing lots of it. it. I think it's still maybe on the early mid kind of end of things. So absolutely a way you can stand out now. A few years from now, maybe your competition also has it. Maybe, maybe not. It's, yeah. Another piece is even if you show up toward the bottom of those first 10 search results, you still, it, because video has such a higher click-through rate, it's as if you were in the top three. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know, you know, the Google, if, if you look at the Google search results and you, and you see some video results, you see a thumbnail, you're clear it's a video, that, that's definitely a much more appealing medium for, for most people to click on. If they can kind of digest the content that they're looking for in a 30 second or one minute video versus navigating through an entire website, um, it can definitely kind of bring them the information they're looking for a little bit easier. Uh, and I definitely think it's, it's a way to, to be an early adopter and get ahead of the curve with your, with your competitors. Yeah, I agree. Um, as, we, as we think about SEO for video, there, there are a couple main factors that, that we want to consider. Um, as Google is not able to actually watch your video content and understand, Google is not going to pick up that emotional component and, and rate you, your video highly in the search results. There are some technical things that we need to do to help Google understand, one, that we have video and what that video is about. Uh, so the first one would be titles. Um, and, and there are a couple ways to do this. Um, so we could be talking about a title of a YouTube video. We could also be talking about the title of your video, which can be done through a micro format. Um, you can identify that you have a piece of video content and with specific HTML tags, call out the title, description, and, and some of these other things. Another place to do that is within a video sitemap. So if you have a bunch of videos within your website that you want Google to index, um, you want to create a separate XML sitemap for your, uh, for your website just for videos. And within this video sitemap, you can give the URL of all these videos uh, as well as the title description and some of the other things that I'll cover here. Um, and that will better allow Google to not only index your video but understand what it's about and then rank you uh, highly for that video. Yeah, and I think if you guys are um, looking for more information about this, it, it gets pretty deep, but the, um, the YouTube Content Creator Playbook or Handbook, whatever it's called, is uh, available online, which has, um, well, you know, ob obviously um, important Google-related information to this, you know, and things like uh, including a, um, a transcription file with the video so that the crawlers can look and see what the content is, um, naming the actual video file that you post online as well as the title. There's all kinds of things like that in there. So if, uh, if, you, if you're interested in that, I'd definitely dig that up. Yeah, and it really, um, 
you know, correlates with, with general SEO practices. You know, what I, what I often tell our, our clients is that what we're trying to do uh, just on our websites in general is give Google as much information as possible. The way that Google crawls the web is through a search spider, basically a, a bot or a computer program that scans the web looking for information and following links to get there. When it runs into video content, it doesn't necessarily know what it's looking for, so we want to take as many of these possible areas and provide Google with as much information, as much ammo to rank us highly. Um, so, so tags are another one uh, that are applicable through YouTube. Um, you can tag and categorize your content. Um, URLs is also going to be important. Um, so the file name of your video, as Dane mentioned, can be part of your URL. Also the URLs in which you're hosting your video content within your website. You want to have your keywords within those and, and correspond to all of those, that other information you're giving about the video. And then the other main component that we want to mention is captions or transcripts, uh, or transcriptions. So um, by providing a full transcription of your video, you're giving Google all of that spoken word that it can't understand. You're putting it into text. Additionally, people might want to actually read that text and, and skip ahead. Um, SEO Moz is a, uh, a great SEO authority that, that I regularly follow, and, and they do a feature called Whiteboard Fridays. Uh, every Friday, they post a video of someone explaining an SEO concept at a whiteboard. Um, right underneath that video, you know, good SEO practice, as I would expect from SEO Moz, they have a transcription of that video. Often I find myself halfway through the video skipping down and reading through that transcript. It's about a five or six minute video, as we mentioned, we have short attention span. So I'm actually able to use that transcript uh, as a user to uh, better, better inform myself and get the information I want quicker. However, that also greatly benefits Google as all the information in the video is now readable by the search engine. And that fourth piece, captions or transcriptions, is actually a bigger topic, but um, there's a huge SEO value to including a full transcript or at least some part of, some kind of subtitling or, or text with your video. Um, it's, whether it's on YouTube or it's on your own site, it, that text is crawlable. It means that you can be found on by those search terms. It also creates more engagement on the page. Um, and let's not forget about other languages. You know, depending on where, where you're trying, you know, who you're trying to reach, you could exponentially increase your market by you know, paying for um, foreign language translation as well. Or automatic translation now through many web browsers. So if you have the text, um, that text can be auto-translated by a browser at this point, whereas the video itself can't be or probably by your phone at this point, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, and you know, I think that's very important as we think about these captions and transcriptions from a search perspective. If you, literally someone could search for a sentence that you say in your video, and your video might come up, whereas otherwise that content would be completely lost, uh, you know, or at least not indexed and searchable by Google. Someone might find that content by chance, but what we want to do is put that content out to the world let Google find it so when people do searches on any of the possible you know, long tail variations of the keywords that we're, we happen to mention in, within our video, uh, we can be found uh, through those as well. And then once people watch that video, you can get a better sense of you know, our brand and messaging as well. Um, so here's an example of, um, this is a client of ours who has, does a, a great job of, of using video. They're, they're posting videos all the time and, and what we help them to do is to uh, optimize their video pages. So um, here's just a, a kind of a, a, a live example of, of what an optimized video page looks like. Um, you know, and, and this is within the, the website. Definitely uh, something that we would recommend is to, to place the video within your website. Have a branded channel for your content. Uh, it's going to be a little bit more powerful than YouTube as you can control your message a little bit more. And as you see here from an SEO perspective, uh, you have titles, we have a description of the video. Uh, you can't see some stuff on the back end, but there's additional information being communicated to Google. And then we have that video transcription down below. And I would say the most important piece of this as well is kind of not the main focus, but off to the left there, you'll see that they have a, a call to action to drop us a line and we'll get you started. They have their contact information immediately there. And, and sometimes these videos are going to be that turning point someone's browsed 10 pages of your website and then they see this video, they see some, uh, you know, a little bit more character from the company, they, they understand your brand a little better. That might be what makes them reach out to your company. You can see how easy it is 
uh, for them to fill out this form as opposed to being on YouTube, clicking a link to your website, looking for a contact form, make that, that message kind of clear and simple and, and easy for people. Yeah, it's, for me it's all about reducing the friction and um, you know, part of that, as you sort of mentioned, is it's, it's a great way to show and tell and make it um, a little more uh, simple for them to get to the uh, conversion step. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, we're going to jump into our fourth topic here uh, what, and really talk about what makes successful video. You know, I think we've clearly established the value of video and, um, you know, wh why we all need to be utilizing video within our marketing mix. Um, so what makes a successful video? And then after that, we'll, we'll dive into the three-month game plan so you can actually kind of put together an action plan of how you'll, you'll implement video. So the first one here is uh, develop a clear goal. Um, so with, with um, just like any other marketing program, with video you definitely want to have a, a clear goal established and, and have a, a kind of a clear expectation of, of what success looks like. What are we expecting to get from that video and um, what, what message are we hoping to translate and, and you know, do we expect that to lead to conversions or maybe we expect that to lead to more website traffic. Uh, either way we want to have that goal established um, so that we can also effectively measure that once that video has launched. Yeah, I, I like to think about this one as sort of one video, one goal. I think it's it's tempting and it's maybe a slippery slope to try and put too much stuff in there, kind of combine messages and make it about awareness and education and trying to convert and sell as well. But if you can focus just on one sort of um, sales funnel related function, I think you can target that video to that function and, and be more successful. Yeah, I, th I think you bring up a, a great point, Dane. Um, as we think about um, our strategy for an SEO program and, and selecting keywords, uh, the process that we go through is once we select a keyword, uh, for example, if, if Web Marketing 123 is going to be optimizing for SEO or for pay-per-click or for social media, we don't have all those keywords on the same page. We actually segment that and are very targeted about which pages talk about which particular product offering. And, and that can definitely apply to video as we make our video relevant to the specific call to action that we have uh, within each goal. Uh, second uh, principle is match the message to the medium. Um, and you know, really here, it's, again, it's similar con uh, similar concept to uh, the way that we approach many of our other marketing campaigns is we want to make sure that we are being very targeted and, and giving people um, you know, kind of something that aligns with their expectations. Uh, for example, if you're, on, if you're on YouTube, you might be expecting a certain kind of content versus potentially on, on the website. Yeah, I think it's also, um, you know, I like to think about taking advantage of what video can do for you. You know, it's, it's a way to engage people's emotions, and it's also, you know, can either be a really short or really long way to kind of communicate. And as long as you're taking advantage of that, you can, you know, hope to be more successful. What you don't want to do is you know, have a company overview video that just drones on and on, you know, in, in the way that maybe a white paper is a little more comprehensive. Because it is a video, there's your opportunity to be concise and kind of condense it in a way that's going to be exciting and capitalize on that emotional component. Absolutely. And, I, you know, I think that goes along with the idea of segmentation as well. You know, that's why you have a white paper that goes into detail. This is why you can have a video that engages people on this level. Uh, the next concept that we want to cover is uh, flexible distribution. Um, and, and really this is the idea of producing your, your video in multiple formats so that it can be distributed across multiple mediums. Uh, one example as we kind of brought up earlier was uh, was was mobile, for example. You know, I, I know that I run into to YouTube videos uh, that say they are not uploaded for mobile or not optimized for mobile, or I'll come across a site that is um, that has a video on their website, but it's not mobile friendly. You know, whereas if it were if it were on a normal YouTube video, it would be. Uh, so always want to think about what are all the possible ways that people could use your video, and, and even thinking ahead uh, to people sharing those those types of content. Uh, so that we can make sure that it's available to anyone and everyone who potentially comes across it. Um, yeah. I think that one of the sort of tangential points to this is when you do think about how, how people might use this uh, or view your content, consume your content, you know, it's, um, it's easy to lose sight of the, the things that aren't in front of you. But you know, maybe someone's looking at this on a phone in India, or maybe they're looking at it on an iPad in you know, France or what, whatever. So you've got to think about how... Um, there are different uses and uh, ways to consume, and as you're making your plans to actually produce this content, make, making sure that you're 
producing something that will work for all this environment. So, for example, if the text is really small and they're trying to read it on a mobile phone, oops, is probably the word. <laughs> exactly. All right. Uh, next one here is embed your video in a branded environment. And so we, we saw that example that we talked about. Uh, you know, really it kind of went over a couple of the the advantages there, but. Um, you know, really we want to present our video content as a piece of our brand. Um, and, and sometimes video is, in my opinion, if I think about my introduction to, to the average brand, it's probably through TV commercials or, you know, more, more commonly now through, through video on the Internet. You know, it's not just looking at someone's logo or not looking at the design of their website. It's getting a real sense uh, for their brand, and I think video is, is one of the best ways to do that. Um, yeah. this, um, this is an important question because a lot of people ask me, should I just put my video on YouTube or you know, what do I do here? And it, uh, of course it's going to depend, um, but I think you know, one of the important points is if you do put a YouTube video and embed that on your site, after they're done watching your video, well they're going to see the thumbnails that come up of all the other videos that may be related that could be your competition or you know, brand inappropriate content. So I generally advocate for having a branded experience on your own website when, when that's important, and then also sticking it on YouTube, because then you've just widened the pie, another way for them to find you. And on YouTube, you can have your own channel so that the video is being viewed in a branded environment. It's not quite the same because you don't have your embedded calls to action and lead forms and so forth, but you can still uh, give some context to the video in that way and not just have it floating on video surfaces. Yeah, and that's... Uh, it, definitely another whole webinar or three we could do on YouTube best practices and, and options, but um, certainly um, YouTube is something that I think every company should be involved in because it is the world's second largest search engine, and if, if you're not there, you're just not a part of that marketplace at all, and that's where a lot of people spend their time. Mm -hmm. I, and I think that Dan's point about, you know, viewing a video on YouTube, uh, part of the reason for having it in a branded environment is it's so people don't see the related videos. Maybe your competitor shows up with that same keyword for your video, and maybe they click over. However, by also being on YouTube and kind of covering all your bases, maybe you can show up for your competitor's video as related. You know, or maybe your, your related videos are coming up. Um, and, and, but you know, the, the advantage of having it branded is you have your call to action right there. It's very similar. I, I think of it like a PPC landing page. Uh, I want to send someone to a dedicated page talking about specifically what I've offered in my ad. You want to do the same thing with video and give them that clear next step, uh, like this form we see on the side of that screenshot, right here. And we talked about YouTube. Um, all right, and then the, uh, the additional successful principle for video is uh, establishing metrics. Uh, and of course, you know, like all of these concepts, these are, are very similar to how we would approach any other marketing campaign. Uh, we want to know. Uh, what are the metrics that we're going to look at for success? Uh, you know, if, if we get X amount of views, does that mean we're successful? Or are we looking at the influence of uh, time on our website? Or how much the influence that's having on our, on our purchase behavior? Either way, we want to define those metrics clearly up front so that when we do launch that video and we monitor its progress, we can very clearly measure that against our, our goals and expectations. And then when you're looking at your ongoing budget for video production, you can say, well, how did this first, how did the last campaign perform against the goals that we set? If you don't establish the metrics, you can't. Exactly. And this sort of goes back to what we were talking about earlier is one video, one goal, kind of an idea. If you're tying one video to one goal, then you can see how it is measuring. If, it, if you made a video that serves several masters, awareness, education, possible conversion, or something like that, it's a little harder to tell how that may have impacted you know, if you're just measuring for conversions, well, how did that impact your awareness? So it gets a little convoluted if you if you make it that way. <laughs> Fair enough. I think another, you know, in, in terms of looking at uh, metrics, uh, we're not going to go dive deep into it, but, but we can track all these things within Google Analytics. So we could set up a, a YouTube video, um, and our link back to our website could be tagged with parameters that tell Google Analytics that it came from this specific video that we've created. And we can see the correlation between how many people are, are making a purchase or filling out a lead form um, that came from that YouTube video specifically. Uh, or we can put event tracking within our website, and we can track every video play, every pause, any amount of things that we want about that video, and then correlate that to the different um, 
conversions that we're receiving on the website. And this is uh, this is something I think is really exciting is is the the marriage of content and tracking, which is still you know being developed. But I think you know web marketing um, one two three has been developing an attribution tool and have, are now using that with the videos on their site. So they've got um, you know the initial data is starting to come in that yes this does shorten the sales cycle yes this does influence uh, purchasing behavior so I think um, this will get better and better and more available to people but if you guys are interested in learning more I definitely um, reach out to web marketing one two three to explore that thanks Tim all right and the last uh, principle here is to supercharge your email with video um, so just like uh, video is effective within uh, other mediums email can also be effectively used for for email it can increase the click through rate uh, you know to to those pages for example I think this is one area where video is, is still yet to um, uh, be fully recognized uh, and I think especially like a b2b lead gen um, purpose I think that we're going to see over the next few years uh, a big boom in how video is used for for uh, video for uh, email marketing and obviously you don't actually email the video itself but you you have a screenshot of a video player, ideal, a branded video player image in the email when a person clicks that, and we found that, that those click rates are much higher. Yeah. Um, that takes them to your branded video environment where the call to action is embedded and you've got your user tracking, so you're not just relying on your email, um, your email tracking software, but you're in your regular analytics. Yeah, and um, I'll be sending out an email after this uh, webinar with a with a video um, in it, so you'll you'll all be able to see an example of that. Oh, great! Yeah. Okay. All right, so let's uh, move on to our three month game plan. We just have a couple minutes left, so we're going to kind of move move through this fast. Um, so, so one of the the first steps is to cultivate your storytellers. It's very important to figure out who those storytellers are and equip them with the right message to go go forward and um, and share that message. You know, oftentimes within our organization, we have many people that are capable of, of telling this story. We have salespeople who are speaking with customers uh, on a daily basis. Uh, we have executives. We have uh, you know marketing people who are familiar with the branding and marketing with the company. We have customer service. All of these people have have stories to tell that, that we could be sharing. And, and I think an interesting point is you know, this can come from any department. Um, I, I've you know. I think typically you think of a storyteller as probably marketing is probably the first thing that pops to mind. But this could be, you know, a salesperson who wants to more effectively communicate with his, you know, prospects. This could be engineering who wants to, you know, make it easier for training of new um, team members. It could be you know, customer support who wants to, who's realizing how much time they're spending with routine questions that could be easily answered with video. So you probably have champions in many departments. Who would who would want to do video and you know if if you um, if you give them the, the way to do so <laughs> right okay uh, and then our, our next step after we've identified uh, after we've identified uh, who those storytellers are and, and kind of the, the stories that they have to tell uh, another thing that we can do is, is repurpose existing content you know we don't always need to start from scratch. Uh, you know, maybe maybe the content of that video with one of those storytellers is going to be based off of a case study that we present in a PowerPoint or a PDF. Maybe they're going to be uh, explaining uh, a white paper in a different format. As we mentioned, you know, not everyone wants wants to read a white paper. Um, another example could be um, taking taking webinars, even taking a, a recorded video of this webinar that we're doing and put together uh, edit together you know clips or some highlights from it, or maybe just one section from it. Uh, so there are a lot of different ways that we can take content that we have existing and repurpose that and funnel that into into our process. Yeah, I, I think uh, one good example of this is um, you know you've got your your marketing message already. You've got your elevator pitch. I mean, all you all you would need to do is expand on that a little bit, perhaps, and you've got content. You know, I, another good example on the uh, on my portfolio on my uh, on digital accomplices, we did a, a video that won some awards for a um, company architecture company called Quinn Evans. And um, you know, because they're an architecture firm, they've got lots of photos of all their buildings. Well, that was a great resource to pull from to be able to show their clients a lot of the work that they've done and talk about it, like the case studies that you mentioned. So you've probably got some content that you haven't quite realized. Exactly. And I, I think if you think about um, you know, finding that content on the rest of your website, people may not be going and, and clicking through every picture on your portfolio. 
but they might see it within that video. Um, all right, and so our, our last uh, content, or excuse me, step here um, for our game plan here is to start at the top uh, and then the bottom. Um, and so this is, this is kind of talking about segmentation and using video for, for different purposes and, and, and kind of being specific. Uh, one video, one story, as, as Dave mentioned. So, you know, we can start with a company profile. Let's start with a broad overview, uh, you know, and not get too much into the details. And we can work all the way down to something like a simple how-to. You know, th this could be something, as I mentioned, there are a, a million videos on YouTube about how to tie a tie. Um, what if we made a video explaining how to do something that is semi-related to our industry? Or maybe even something that is, you know, kind of, kind of silly and, and funny that's just, you know, semi-related to our industry. Uh, we had a, a, a client who, who makes... Um, very expensive thermal imagers, and, and they had a video that they made where they were um, their value proposition is how durable that they are. So they had a video where they dropped them their their products from a six foot ladder, and they dropped their competitors thousands of dollars worth of equipment. They showed their competitors shattering, and theirs were just fine. Um, and this didn't have a whole lot to do with the actual product uses, but it was a really fun way for them to to engage people. Um, and th that video got a lot of views from a lot of people, not even within the industry but allow them to get more exposure by that video going viral. Um, all right, so we, we're going to launch a, a quick poll here and as we are wrapping up. So um, our question is, uh, if you could, uh, forgive the misspelling, if you, could, if you could quantify the impact of video, you would be in a position to would you be able to implement video at your company? We, we want to understand um, is measurement and being able to um, uh, attribute revenue or measure possible cost, cost savings, is, is that something that would make a difference? We're obsessed with measurement here. I, I'm not afraid to admit it. That's, that's how we've built our, our, our practice. Um, and so where are you with video and would this kind of approach to video help you be, be a successful advocate for development of video as a strategy within your company? Let us know. Okay, almost all the results coming in. Just give you uh, one more minute. Whichever, which of these answers most closely matches your feeling? One of the one of the things I um, discussed a great many times with people is um, how um, you know the classic marketing um, question of you know I know that half of my marketing budget is wasted but which half mm -hmm. you, know, you know we're now in this sort of tracking area so we're learning how to find out which half right but um, you know there, there's still going to be some things that are, that are difficult to measure when you're talking about things that are inherently you know soft things like brand impact I mean you can do a focus group like they you know have done for a long time. But for, I think for a lot of companies, that's, that's not one of the tools that they generally have available. You know? Well, I, I think it can be very paralyzing to be faced with, oh, well, so we could do how-to videos. We could have our CEO. We could make, you know, there's too many possibilities. I really appreciated what you said, that a good place for every company to start is having a company video that tells your story. You can put it on your homepage. Uh, it's something that your sales team can yeah. direct people to. I think yeah, just it's starting at the top of the funnel with awareness for me, and you know, because it's that first step, it can always be sent out to other people. It can be a, a, on a blog post, social media. And you, you know, you'll get a lot of mileage out of that. It's, um, it's hard to see how that wouldn't be applicable. Um, well, we've 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 passed slightly over our time. I, I want to thank Dane. Thank yeah, you so much for joining us. Yeah, you're welcome. I hope you guys got a lot out of it, and um, yeah, looking forward to, uh, to speaking with some of you about some of your questions. Yeah, keep an eye out for the uh, the example of successful use of, of uh, uh, video in email. He's going to send you a, a, a message about his services. Um, thank you, Alex, for presenting, and we hope to see uh, many of you on next week's webinar, the topic of which is predicting Google's next algorithm change. We, we've been um, gazing on our crystal ball and doing research for months on what we're seeing in, on the basis of our uh, more than 100 clients. 
And so we have our predictions for what's coming next year. But, uh, that's going to be uh, next Thursday at 10 a.m. Pacific time. Hope to join you there. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.